Welcome to Crimson Tide Connection, where we visit with your favorite coaches and players. And today, I'm joined by Patrick Murphy, the head coach of the Rainy National Champion Alabama softball team. Murph, how does the national champion sound? It is awesome. I, I, I cannot tell you the response that we have gotten. Uh, I went to the Dallas for the Michigan-Alabama mm -hmm. football game, and everybody that I passed either shook my hand, high-fived me, uh, patted us on the back, uh, even a Michigan fan. I took a picture with him because he said his uh, young daughter watched the entire World Series, and um, awesome. it's just been incredible. All summer long, it's been nothing but the best. That's awesome. And Murph, you know, you've been out recruiting this summer. How has the response been from the recruits and, and everyone that you see out on those recruiting trips? Well, I don't know if you remember when we came home that Thursday, we uh, flew into Tuscaloosa at noon. Mm -hmm. I had a team meeting for about an hour at the clubhouse, and then I left at 3 to go to California. And, uh, you know, even in California where we do not have a kid, or we didn't have a kid currently on the roster when we played in Oklahoma City, um, Everybody from someone in the concession stand to the umpires, everybody said, good job, Bama. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was really cool being out, you know, immediately right after we won. But all summer long, the, the response has been terrific. And uh, you've been to California more than once. Uh, you took a trip out to L.A. for the ESPYs. You and Jackie Trainer were nominated for ESPYs. What was that experience like? Well, if you can think of uh, sports heaven, I mean, <laughs> it's just, it was unbelievable. Um, just to meet uh, Jose Bautista, Eli Manning, Peyton Manning, um, Kim Mulkey from Baylor Women's Basketball was incredible. Paul Rhodes from Iowa State Football uh, sat behind us during the ceremony and um, Barrett Jones was in front of us. And uh, Paul Rhodes is one of the nicest guys we met the entire time. I mean, what a class, class guy. Uh, my assistant coach, Allison Habits, met Kenny Chesney. Mm -hmm. um, it was just unbelievable. Did you tell Paul Rhodes thank you for being Oklahoma State yes, for us? Yes, he actually said, first, I think you owe me a big thank you. And <laughs> I grabbed Barrett, and uh, Barrett gave him a big thumbs up, and Trent Richardson was in front of Barrett, and he kind of waved at him. And um, No, that was a huge, huge uh, win for Iowa State over Oklahoma State. That had to be a pretty cool experience for you, though. Did you get to do anything else while you are out in L.A., any cool things? Well, it was, it was a quick trip. Um, they had a uh, kind of a pre-ESPYs uh, party. And uh, we actually kind of met uh, the Gronk, uh, yeah. Gronkowski. Nice. Um, just a, a great kid, you know, mm -hmm. very good athlete. Um, there's an article in Sports Illustrated, uh, the NFL preview, and I literally could have written that article based on uh, my meeting him in, in LA that week. Yeah. Just a great athlete that loves life. Um, it was a, a neat to see him, you know, away from the football field and. He's just like a normal, you know, 24, 25-year-old kid. Right. It's not like you had a great time out there. Yeah, Holly Rowe from ESPN kind of was our uh, liaison for the whole uh, three days. Mm -hmm. She was terrific to us. Uh, you know, she's one of the reporters for all their softball right. games and a great, great lady. Well, Murphy, you're about to kick back into full swing with softball. It seemed like, you know, just the other day we were out in Oklahoma City, and here it is, you're about to start the fall brawl. Can you kind of talk about the release of that schedule and just, you know, when those dates are, when fans can come out and see the Tide play? Well, we, we try to correspond with, obviously, the football schedule. And um, October 20th and 21st, we're playing a doubleheader both days at noon. Okay. Uh, the first day, um, it's Northwestern State, Louisiana, which actually is now homecoming for Amanda Locke. She got a job as their pitching coach this summer, so that'll be okay. fun to see her again. And then the next day is against a Division II from South Carolina, Anderson University, who had a very good year last year. A week later, on October 28th, we have Tennessee State, which is another Division One in Nashville. So we're lucky we get to play four games against Division Ones. And then uh, November 8th, uh, we schedule a single game against Shelton State, which will be the last day of our fall ball. And I know uh, Coach Boyle does a great job with his team. They won over 40 games last year. And it's kind of the uh, tea time rivalry sort of mm -hmm. thing. I know they'll bring a big crowd. Uh, and all those games are um, a fundraiser for our booster club, the Diamondbackers, okay. which really helps us. Uh, throughout the entire year so it's seven games at home um, should be a, a fun schedule and I'm going to do like I do every year um, the fall ball is just to see what everybody can do mm -hmm. I'll have a different lineup I'll have probably have a different leadoff hitter I'll have a different three-hole hitter a cleanup hitter um, Jackie Train and Leslie Jurel will pitch it all because uh, Lauren Sewell is coming back from knee surgery and she just missed getting cleared you know to okay. pitch in the games uh, we don't want to do anything that might ruin her spring, 
So she'll be okay with that, but you'll see a lot of Leslie and a lot of uh, J Train. So it's a great opportunity for the Tide fans to come out there and just kind of see what this new team is going to be like because I mean, you, you, you've lost some seniors off that national championship team. Yeah, and you know, that's six great young ladies, but we uh, had the running test at the beginning of the, the fall. Michelle Diltz was really pleased with everyone, and um, we might be faster this year than we were last year. And, you know, you have the NCAA record holder of 74 consecutive stolen bases in Jennifer Fenton, who graduated. But you have uh, Andrea Hawkins, who's probably the fastest kid in the state of Texas. Callie Case was the fastest kid in Georgia. And uh, Haley McClenney, who was the fastest kid in the state of Alabama last year, are all freshmen. Uh, they could, um, they might not steal 74 in a row, right. but combined, I could see them st stealing, you know, 120 bases. Uh, they're, they're that fast very good on the base pass and uh, they're just going to get better because they're only freshmen. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Murphy, you come out there and see the Tide play uh, for during the fall brawl. Uh, this should be some great games. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like I said, you're going to see a different kid every single game in the leadoff spot. I got to see what they can do. Uh, it's the first time some of them put on a uniform, an Alabama uniform, and I know they'll be nervous and everything, but it'll be fun to see them. All right. All right. Thanks, Murph. And for this edition of Crimson Tide Connection, that's it. But for head coach Patrick Murphy, I'm Chris Fringland for Crimson Tide Connection.